Hello, everyone. My name is Michelle Meyer. I'm with Oracle. I run the America's Real Estate Facilities team. I'm the past president of the Chicago chapter of Cornet Global. I also happen to be the current Cornet Global board chair. With me today is Jamie Georges. She is previously the leader of CBRE Chicago Business. However, um, she has just transitioned to a new job within CBRE, and we're going to hear a little bit more about that um, as we delve into our conversation today. I know everyone's looking for inspiration right now, and so the Chicago chapter came up with the idea to interview some of our leading women here in Chicago. We're calling it 15 Women in 15 Minutes. So we hope to offer something inspiring and more importantly, positive. So to kick things off, um, Jamie, tell us a little bit about your background and the most exciting change here as part of your career journey. The only thing constant is change, right? Uh, no, actually not for me. That was not my career journey. So I started um, at CBRE and actually within the real estate industry 15 years ago and started as a researcher. Um, Jack Durberg hired me, who is now one of our um, one of our global CEOs. So it's it's nice to nice to follow in his footsteps ultimately. Um, but really was kind of um, I grew up inside of the business internally inside of the brokerage business. Um, and before I was potentially transitioning into a brokerage role after a couple of years in research, I went to Jack Durberg and Chris at the time, Chris Connolly, and said. I'm a young female who's never been a broker. I've never been a client, but I want to get into leadership. And, you know, it was a different world then. They were able to, you know, move some things around, put me on a great professional development path. And, and ultimately, I, I helped support them lead the business from a more of like a sales management pipeline pursuit business development perspective to help them kind of manage the brokerage business over time. And then, let's see, for the past eight years, um, I've been a market leader in Chicago leading our occupier business. So our tenant representation, transaction management, anything that touches really a user of space uh, was all under my responsibility inside of Chicago until um, about two months ago when I was asked by um, really our, our segment CEO and our, and our global CEO to take a national leadership role um, on our America's leadership team, really focused ultimately on um, building uh, the absolute unmatched broker operating platform. So anything and everything that ensures that our brokers are successful inside of CBRE as an organization and that our clients are getting the absolute best insights out of it uh, is my role. So middle of a global pandemic, leave a P&L job to go into a national role where I need to be on a plane quite often to really uh, you know, drive some some consistencies in the way that we run the business and ensuring that our brokers have everything they need. And I can't get on a plane now. So total unexpected career pivot that, you know, took me off of my, uh, my path of what I thought I ultimately wanted to do, but uh, basically grew up at CB and um, inside of the Chicago business and a uh, quick kind of background on that. My, my stepfather was in development and my mother was in, um, the travel industry leading a sales organization. So somehow I like merged into like leading a sales organization in the real estate industry. So I've kind of like picked up a few things from them too. So um, excited to, to take on the new job, but I'm, I'm missing, I'm going to be missing my Chicago roots. That's for sure. Wow. Okay. That's just amazing. Challenging enough, right, to take on a new job in the pandemic, but yet alone one that normally you'd be traveling around trying to, you know, build up these relationships. So how are you, how are you managing to, you know, enable your success right now? So I would say for the new role, it's a, you know, the, the current environment is a blessing and a curse, right? people have time to engage on things and get a little bit deeper, although it's on Zoom. I'm very Zoomed out these days, um, other than this is going to be great. But, um, you know, people have time to engage. They're not out entertaining, you know, our leaders of our LA business, he's not out entertaining clients right now or traveling or anything. So they can actually dig in and engage and actually do some great strategic planning right now, which is a lot of what I'm ultimately doing. And so it's nice for that. However, it just nothing beats the, 
you know, in-person engagement with people when you're really trying to drive some really challenging initiatives to like get in there and kind of go through the fire with people. That's always kind of been my style. So that's been a big challenge. Um, you know, it's, it's nice not, it's kind of nice not commuting right now, but at the same time, I, I think I'm, I'm definitely working earlier and later and it's hard to kind of step away. I'm in the middle of my hallway where my kids' rooms are. It's kind of hard to step away from like your desk in this current environment too. So managing the best I can. And I'm, I'm, I have a philosophy of like, there's only some things that I can actually can control. So I will do the things I can control. What's happening outside, I can't really control that necessarily. So got to make the best of it ultimately. Yeah, that's good. It helps bring some balance. So what what an interesting background. I'm wondering, you know, throughout your career, if there was a particular particular story that, you know, maybe was inspirational for you or could be inspirational for others that you might want to share. So a story and I think, you know, um, a story, yes, but maybe an area where I thought I was right, but I was actually not right. Um, I was, I, my experience over the past 15 years, I had basically, especially as a market leader, I layered it in experience like every year or so, right? Uh, different responsibilities, more responsibility, but I was ultimately doing some of the same things, right? So the pivot to this role is very challenging because it's not a layered in of experience. It's a completely new world and a new role dealing with a lot of other kind of groups. But I think, you know, a, you know, something that I went through that ultimately led to great advice was I was very impatient along the way, despite my layering in of experience, but I always kind of wanted more and I wanted to be, you know, viewed as having all of this, you know, uh, I guess, experience and status. And I was always the youngest one, right, that that wasn't a broker and wasn't a client. So I thought that I had to like overcompensate, you know, for that reason, that was all kind of internally to me on, you know, knowing the market better than everybody, knowing the clients better than everybody. And, and one time my boss, um, Chris Connolly, he'll remember this. I was getting, I had a, I have a lot of passion for things and I, you know, get excited about stuff. And he, he stopped and he's like, you have to stop being so angry. He was like, angry? And, and he it was not, he did not mean any ill will. I was just getting myself so worked up that I was getting angry, but it was just kind of my passion. And then from there I stepped back and I was like, like that was really telling to me. And I don't think that that was rude or, or a faux pas for him to say that to me, but it was really helpful. And it really helped me just calm down that my emotion, my excitement, my passion for things can definitely be misconstrued and taken in a very different way. So I, I think through that a lot. Um, and I see that in people and I try to pull out and say, look, I, this happened to me before. And I promise you're going to, you know, chill out a lot more if you actually like, you know, have a little bit of perspective on the situation. So so when he said that to you, were you taken aback for a minute because maybe you didn't see yourself in quite that same way? So I was very defensive. Like, what do you, what, angry? What do you mean? And so then that's how I knew. I was getting a little angry. I was kind of <laughs> losing sight of stuff, right? <laughs> By the way, I'm the first person to stand up for myself if I don't agree with what it is. But there was some really, there was a moment of self-awareness in that where I was like, oh, actually, he's right this, you know, um, and it, and it's just like, I would work myself up some back to the things I can control. I can control that. Right. And I, and I worked myself up, but I always think about that and just, you know, it's not the end of the world. And, and early in your career, it's hard to, it's really hard to piece that together and understand that. I think. Yeah, that's a hard balance to achieve. Plus kudos to you. That takes a lot of emotional intelligence and behavioral change to try to adjust. The, the brokerage business inside of our industry has a little bit of a self-awareness, you know, weakness. And so I am a giant believer in that. And if I'm there to help lead 200 plus brokers in Chicago, that's got to be something that we talk about, right? And so I have to do that for myself as well. Oh, I think that's tremendous. So tell me, um, as you're, you know, leading with these large teams, what advice would you give to someone who's early in their career? First of all, don't get angry. Just kidding. <laughs> um, no. So I, you know, I've been a believer of keep your head down, continue moving in the context of become the master of your craft. 
be the go-to person in whatever position that ultimately is. Really do your work really well and, and, and you know, over communicate what that ultimately looks like. And, and when you do that, the hard work, that all that stuff all ultimately comes out. Also, if you're a, a thoughtful, subtle, not subtle, but a very thoughtful ad, advocate for yourself, the opportunities will come, but you have to have a body of work that you're proud of and that you've really done yourself. And I think that my advice would be become the master of your craft and whatever it is, even if your role changes, be the best that you can possibly be in that because really good hard work speaks for itself and then be a thoughtful advocate on, on yourself and ultimately what that next, the next um, experience or opportunity ultimately is. But I don't think enough people do that and they don't stay in a position long enough or focus long enough in it to be able to really become the master of what it is um, and instead get, you know, distracted by another potential opportunity. Yeah, I think sometimes it's having a little patience too, right? So that you do develop that mastery. Um, you know, sometimes you think you've achieved what you wanted to, but there's always a little bit more to learn in the process. So in that same vein, you know, oftentimes as people become masters in a particular area, they may want to transition into leadership. So what advice would you give someone who is interested in a leadership role? I, I'm asked this often because I think at a, at a young age with not a lot of experience, I really wanted to go that direction. And I think that it was because deep down inside, I really wanted to help people be better and be the best real estate professionals they can ultimately be and have everything that they ultimately need to be successful. Right. And, and it was, it was going into leadership or going into a brokerage role. I honestly thought if I went into a brokerage role, a commission-based environment that I make sure all of the people around me had the deals or the leads or whatever before me. And it's like, wait a second, that's not how you do a leadership or that's not how you, how you can be successful in brokerage business. So I just, I had it in my heart and soul that I wanted to ultimately help people. So I think you have to dig deep on what's driving you to ultimately be there because you can take, you know, you can, you can be a sponge. I was a sponge to a lot of people for a long time, including a lot of my brokers um, and like learning the business and, and really taking that leap on, you know, you don't have to have all the credentials that you think you have, or that typically was important in this environment to ultimately be successful in what you do. But um, I think that it's important just to, just to, you know, be specific about, about ultimately where you want to go and some of that. Um, I totally lost my train of thought. I have a great point for you. It'll come I'm back sure, to me. I'm sure it'll come back to you. But would, would you say that you, know, you have to have a passion? You really do want to help people if you want to aspire to that leadership role? Absolutely. I think you also have to, thank you, you also have to, um, you have to have a voice and you have to have, and I always tell people, you have to have an opinion the way that you communicate that opinion or, or, or add your thoughts, your comments, and it has to be thoughtful and has to not be verbose or abrasive, but you should have an opinion on something um, because it, and it should be your own informed thinking versus like the, the, the king or the queen of the headlines, which just kills me in leadership position. And then finally, I would say um, really important EQ right? Emotional intelligence, especially in the world that we're in right now. I think that's going to be critical for, for, you know, people being inspirational leaders, um, especially in our environment now. Yeah, I would agree. I think it's table stakes that an effective leader, you have to have that skill. Um, I know our time is, is running out really quickly. Um, what I was hopeful you, you wouldn't mind sharing with us how in this, you know, challenging environment with a new job, with dealing with the pandemic, um, it's now summertime, how are you maintaining balance in your work and personal life? Or, um, as you say, you know, maybe there isn't as much of a balance just because of the hours you have to put in. I would say I'm doing better than I was. Um, you know, my daughter is now my daughter. I have a um, almost four year old and a an almost seven year old. And my daughter was able to go to daycare for the first time yesterday. By the way, she's so much happier than than running around here in and out of my Zoom camera. Sorry, it's not going to be as much fun. But um, 
I would say there was, you know, a very specific reminder when I could see them every day. So at least I can stop and I can go make lunch for a half hour. And I actually like pulled in those moments as much as possible that aren't possible when, when I'm at the office all day long. Right. So work-life balance, it's a, it's a total blend. Like that's, uh, that's even perfect now because I had to live and work and play all in the same area in this, in this stage. Um, but I would just say that, you know, and I was telling a couple of our female brokers this um, a couple of weeks ago, like sometimes my daughter just sitting here on the ground and I have to turn off the camera on my Zoom and just sit and play with her. Just have to do it. And that's okay in this environment. And plus it's going to kind of keep us all sane. So, um, you know, trying and getting better by the day, but hopefully, you know, I'm looking forward to being on the other side of, of you know, what this really looks like for, for our industry and, and for Chicago too. So, Jamie, any last words of encouragement for those who might take the time to listen to this recording? Encouragement. So, glass is always half full. Focus on the things that you can ultimately control. And at the end of the day, do what makes you happy and be real to yourself. I really feel like that's something that carried me on to this next position notwithstanding the big risk that it ultimately is taking, uh, that I viewed that this would be taking um, into this kind of new position. But you work hard and become the master at your craft, and you're going to get that call one day that, that someone's going to ask you to take a really, really cool strategic position. And, and I'm fortunate to have been able to be put in that position. So I would encourage, encourage everybody else to, to you know, continue working hard for that. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon. I Thank know you. you'll continue to do great things. And again, appreciate you taking the time. Thanks so much, Michelle.